Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike. I am the American Analyst. And tonight, we're going to be talking about Hillary Clinton. Yes, I know. I know. I don't want to talk about her either. <laughs> but she just had a brand new documentary come out on Hulu. And the New York Times has done an opinion piece on it. So we are going to talk about my opinion of what their opinion of a documentary is. <laughs> uh, if you like what I do, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Twitter and Minds. Let's get into it. All right, so before we talk about this, I want to talk about identity politics and what it is on on the most basic level. And all I did was a cursory Google search, not really the most rigorous research process, but I think this definition is good enough. The definition of identity politics, a tendency for people of a particular religion, race, social background, etc., to form exclusive political alliances away from traditional broad-based party politics. So for the purposes of this video and in analyzing this article, I would like to include gender amongst religion, race, social background, and gender. I think that certainly falls into people of a particular group. Now I'm not saying that everybody identifies firstly with their gender. I think the vast majority of people do not. However, why I'm doing this is to talk more broadly about identity politics because this woman who wrote this, certainly the first thing she would say to you is, I am a woman, therefore. The first thing, the first thing. So I'm only gonna go over the last four paragraphs and that's because that's really where the the crux of the article is really all right so here it is <clears throat> but this urge to demand perfection from women in the face of ever-changing requirements and with absolutely no model for what a perfect political woman might look like and then put imperfect women out to pasture once we don't see any route for them to accomplish what we want is one of the reasons we've never had a woman in the white house and is one of the many reasons we hemorrhage top female talent in nearly every industry and field if we continue to proclaim confidence that we will have a female president one day while cautioning against it happening right now or with this woman we are signing up for male rule in perpetuity <laughs> male rule First of all, this is amazing. Like we all get together, <laughs> all the men get together and decide, all right, here's our plan for the week. Here's how we're going to be running society. And I know what people would say. They're going to say, well, no, it's just institutions have been built up over time for X, Y, and Z. Look at male CEOs. And it's like, okay, what you got to keep in mind is maybe there are more male CEOs than female CEOs, but there's also a lot more non-male CEOs than male CEOs. I think that's something to keep in mind. But my, the thing I really want to talk about is while cautioning against it happening right now or with this woman. So, so what are we just, we're supposed to vote. She's talking in this case about Elizabeth Warren, but we're just supposed to vote for Clinton or Warren because she's a woman. That's the reason? Seriously? That's all you have? That's all you have. And perfect. She 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 claims that okay, Hillary might not have been perfect. Oh, no, 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 that's not even it. That's, that's not even it. She's saying that we said this is what the perfect female politician would look like. So then it's presented before the American people. And then the American people change their mind. That's what she's saying that we just changed our, we were like, we want Hillary. And then once we had her, she was like, whoa, no, 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 not that one, that, not that one. And then she's saying we did it again in 2020. 
It's crazy. It's craziness. Like, you had the most corrupt candidate in history is only the only way you could possibly lose to Donald Trump, a reality TV show host. Seriously. You've been in politics for 40 years, and you lost to a reality TV show host. I know why. I know why. Because you're the most corrupt politician in a generation. And easily. Easily. And it's just amazing to me that it's like, here's your perfect political woman. Well, actually, that might not be wrong. <laughs> At least for me. Yeah, that she would be the perfect politician. Totally ensconced in the system with the media everybody backing her everyone so yeah i she she is a perfect politician i'll give her that but she's still lost thankfully all right um here we go the same way it's tempting to use it's tempting to use timing to rationalize our cowardice see now it's cowardice if you don't vote for a woman. It's cowardice. I just want you to know that. I want a female president. It just isn't the right time. No one's saying that. No one's saying that. I don't like Warren because she's a liar. Sorry. I don't vote for liars. And discharge ourselves from any duty to take action. Someday, one of those little girls who hugged Miss Clinton or locked pinkies with Miss Warren will be the president. It's just a matter of time. If that's your view... It makes sense to insist Miss Clinton goes away because her continued presence doesn't do anything other than make us feel bad. Maybe she even gets in the way of forward motion. Well, I would certainly say that she does. And again, this is this is identity politics. This is saying, let's not look at people as individuals. We're going to look at just the fact that she's a woman. That's that's why you vote for her. That's why. Forget about her as a person. Or forget about any of the other candidates. Forget about them. If you don't vote for Warren or Clinton, you're a sexist. Sorry. I hate to tell you that. I hate to tell you that. I hate to be the one to do it. Not only that. Not only that. Identity politics, politics is antithetical to what it means to be an American. Right? So think about the Declaration of Independence. Right? Um, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I think you might say, you might say that we would be a group. And it was, it was referring to the founding fathers. It was referring to them. They're making a statement. But then their next one, all men, refers to the entirety of the human race. I'm sure most of us are old enough to remember a time that when you said men, it referred to all of humanity. And that's certainly the case. 100% the case. All men are created equal. 100%. So it's like, you're going to turn around and tell me that I should vote for Elizabeth Warren or Hillary Clinton because she's a woman? No, I don't care. I don't care. Tell me what you're going to do. Tell me what you've done. And show me that you're a person with integrity. And I don't believe that either Hillary Clinton or uh, Elizabeth Warren are people with integrity. And I can hear people saying, I can hear people saying to me, but Mike, you said you're a Trump supporter. Trump lies all the time. Um, yeah, yeah, he does. He does. Um, I would... I wouldn't call it them lies. I tend to call them exaggerations. Nine times out of ten, he's just saying like, oh, um, we made a billion dollars last month. And instead, it'll be like 900, 900, 000, 900 million, five. You see what I'm saying? So I, I would tend to call most of them exaggerations. But he's also lied. He's a very successful business person and a politician. All politicians lie. They all do. At the end of the day. At the end of the day, here's the biggest difference that I see between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton slash Elizabeth Warren. I believe, whether you agree with it or not, I agree. I believe he believes what he's saying. He really does. 
whether you agree with his vision or not, he does want to, quote-unquote, make America great. Whatever, again, whether you disagree, I think it's fair to say that he believes that. So again, he's a person with integrity. As opposed to definitely Clinton, and to a lesser extent, I think Warren. I don't think they actually believe any of the things they say, so I'm not going to vote for you. But as any person, last two paragraphs, but as any person with even a passing knowledge of social justice movements could tell you, watching the minutes or years tick by is not sufficient for radical social change. I don't want radical social change. I don't want that. Maybe you think that's a good thing, but radical, and, and this is another thing. Americans are not radical. We've never, we've never been radical. Going back to the American Revolution, is that at the time, it, it was a radical idea. But since then, the, the idea of self-determination, of republicanism, of democracy, that was radical ideas. But we haven't really strayed too much from then. Since then, it's like, hey, look, I'm going to leave you alone. We're going to try to have the smallest government as possible. We've obviously, you know, had to adjust some things. I think we failed in some ways. But we haven't really been radical since the country's founding. Since that initial founding, we kind of stayed pretty much the same. Just the ideas have just evolved with technology. So it's, it, I don't want radical social change. It's like, hey, look, let's do incremental stuff. Show me where, this is why I, I consider myself like center right. Like, yeah, I believe there's probably some re regulation out there that we probably need. I think there's a, definitely a lot more that we can cut back. But I, yeah, I'm not a crazy person. There's probably some regulation we need. Show me where it is. Let's work on it. And then I can turn around and show you some places where we can probably cut back on regulation. Like, let's do slow change over time as opposed to radical social change. I'm good, bro. <laughs> I'm good. Change is neither linear nor inevitable. Okay. Thank you, I guess. Excellent observation, and it takes a lot more to generate that. Okay, that's simple passage of time. Um, well, actually, that that is a logical fallacy. That would be the same river twice fallacy. Um, that, you know, if, if you could imagine, if you take a oh, walk in a river and you turn around and walk back right, right back in, it's not the same river. So this that would be a logical fallacy. She's not really making a point. It's just not consistent. One of those things... One of those things, it takes a willingness to reread our most challenging and complicated stories and reevaluate with ever expanding hindsight the people we turn into the protagonists and the villains of our most pitched cultural dramas. We, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. The people we turn into. <laughs> The protagonist and so she's she's a um it's hilarious she's a, a pro hillary person i know there's still some of them left i know and she's saying we need to reevaluate the protagonists and villains of our cultural dramas so 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 are you saying that hillary's the villain if you're a protag if you're for hillary and you're saying we need to reevaluate who's the hero and the villain so then hillary's the villain right all right. Um, I mainly wanted to talk about identity politics. So I'll end with this. Um, it's not it's not a valid reason to vote somebody. Just this is the simplest way to put it. Just being something is not a valid reason to vote for anyone. Like voting for Barack Obama because he was black, you could actually say that would actually be racist in itself. Just for that reason, taking that, like, I want to, I'm voting for this person just to, quote unquote, make history. You could actually say it's racist or sexist. I think there's actually a fairly strong argument there. As opposed to saying, look, I'm going to look at your policies. I'm going to look at what you've done now, in the past, and what you're telling me you're planning on doing. And we'll either agree or disagree, like I said, in a moderate way. We'll make some moderate changes here or there. Because things are pretty good right now. I got news for you. Things are pretty good. You know, we got this uh, whole situation 
with certain uh, communicable microorganisms, if you if you understand what I'm saying. But other than that, which is a big one, but I think that'll blow away. Other than that, things are pretty good. Can can we not do the radical social change? I think that would be pretty nice. If you like what I do, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Twitter and Minds. Have a good evening. Thank you all for listening. This is Mike, the American Analyst. Follow me on Twitter, Minds, and subscribe to me on YouTube. And be sure to hit that bell notification. I'll be coming out with new videos every single day for your viewing enjoyment. Have a good one.